The Salton Sea, 376 square miles of shallow salt lake, located an hour south of Palm Springs, California. It's home to millions of fish, and it's a vital stop for hundreds of species of migrating birds. In the 1950s and 60s, the Salton Sea was promoted as the Riviera of California, and hundreds of thousands flocked to its warm shores. It was popular with Hollywood icons, and its tourism frequently exceeded other popular parks like Yosemite. Today, the sea is forgotten and drying up. Without proper restoration, its decline will affect millions. This was the catalyst that in 2013 inspired the University of California, Irvine to launch the Salton Sea Initiative. Well, over the years, our teams of scientists have worked hard to identify some major scientific challenges that any restoration program has to deal with. Some of those challenges are issues like selenium that's brought in from the Colorado River. We have increasing salinity from salt that's leached from the soils that's brought into the Salton Sea. My research is desalinization. We're looking at different ways to reduce the salinity of the Salton Sea and bring it down to that of ocean levels. In addition to the desalinization technologies, we're also looking at different ways to generate electricity, be it through geothermal or solar, so we don't have to rely on traditional fossil fuel burning. Any structures that we might build have to accommodate the geologic activity around here. We have the San Andreas Fault that runs directly uh, uh, three miles away from where we are right now. We have reducing inflows, and the reducing inflows not only affect the biology and the chemistry of the lake, but they also affect by a receding lake level, exposure of lake bed sediments that could be prone to blowing dust. Over the next 10 years, the water levels in the Salton Sea will decline and this will reveal shoreline along the side, dry shoreline, which is referred to as playa. This is covered with alkaline dust. Desert winds will lift this alkaline dust, producing toxic dust clouds. It creates lung diseases, such as cancer, COPD, asthma. One of the things that we're particularly excited about is in collaboration with state and federal agencies, there is a development of wetland marsh habitats in the periphery of the sea. And these habitats are going to be used to augment bird populations as well as provide shelter for fish and ideally keep water and vegetation from allowing dust to blow in that region. The consequences of this drying is going to affect places that are not only in the immediate vicinity of the Salton Sea, but the reach of this catastrophe is really going to be a lot greater than that. It's going to extend all the way north to places like Palm Springs and even further afield. It's going to be a regional disaster that's going to affect towns as far away as Arizona and the rest of the Great Basin. This alkaline dust also can affect agriculture. The Imperial Valley in 2011 had agricultural products valued at $5.3 billion and the toxic and alkaline dust blowing in this region can affect those productivities as well. The environmental challenges facing the sea have also greatly affected the local residents, whose number and resources dwindle every year. Any effort to restore the sea will have to deal with the challenges they face as well. We don't like to look at poverty in this country, and urban poverty is usually the image we have of poverty. There's a lot of rural poverty in California itself, especially in the Salton Sea, and we don't see it. We don't want to see it. We often forget that the ecology of the Salton Sea includes the communities of people living on its shores. These are some of the poorest communities in California. In one community, over 48% are living below the poverty line, and many of them are way below the poverty line. The poorest of the poor. The people who are living there are living there in horrible conditions because we want them to be there in order to pick our food and help grow our food. We need to take care of them better. In our case, the client is are the people who live there. We are uh, representing a group of uh, largely migrant workers out in the Coachella Valley. They are direct beneficiaries of whatever the university does to improve conditions. Our faculty and students 
are working with high school teachers to build stronger science curriculum to expose the students and therefore the families of the students who live in these communities to the ecological principles at work in the sea and some of the challenges that political and social factors um, bring to the ecological picture. We're working with uh, Tim Bradley and David Gardner and other faculty members to bring in a science fair to my AP Environmental Science and Chemistry class, which is something we haven't done because we're so small. UCI brings that world to them and brings those experiences. UCI has helped uh, us out at the Salton Sea with citizen science programs uh, involving high school students all the way down to elementary school kids. We have the, the kids discovery camp going as a result of their help. In the Salton Sea region, there is very little industry and very high unemployment. There's a lack of jobs, a lack of opportunities, a lack of a, a heart of a community, a lack of a strong culture. Of the residents who are employed, many of them have to travel clear out of the county to get to their jobs. Restoring the sea can create much needed jobs. Efforts being considered are renewable energy, habitat restoration, expansion of agricultural lands, and desalination. I've been working out here at the Salton Sea for about nine years, running a desalination test plant. And we've been demonstrating that it is possible to desalinate salt and seawater using geothermal steam as a heat source. The massive amount of salts in the salt and sea can be turned into commercially useful product. You can separate the salts into a purified sodium chloride and sell that on the market after refinement. And you can use the other mix of salts in solar energy generating schemes. We believe that this is an overlooked opportunity for the business community to come in, help to save the Salton Sea, and at the same time make a substantial profit doing so. The dream of restoration can become a reality, but the process of getting there will be complex. There are many differing interests at stake. The sea spans two counties, a state park, a federal wildlife preserve, and the lands of several native tribes. Plans have been discussed since the 1950s, and Congress, led by Congressman Sonny Bono, even appropriated $337 million in 1998 to fund research on ways to restore the sea. But with an overall price tag in the billions, additional government funds will definitely be required. The Salton Sea has been studied for many years and there's been a lot of different ideas about what could be done to, to help with the Salton Sea, but there's no consensus on which plan we should go with. What we need is some help with organizing those thoughts, bringing a consensus and, and setting a goal that everyone can get behind. All the various groups have talked with our congressional leaders, uh, both the House and the Senate. We've talked to the, uh, the local legislators, we've talked to California legislators, and what we hear consistently, again, is this notion that until you all get on the same page, we're not going to promote funding for this activity. At the Salton Sea, there are many conflicting political and economic interests. The University of California has no political or economic affiliation, and we can act as a bridge between these groups, facilitating discussion and solutions to the problems. Our responsibility as a federal agency is to make sure that we can uh, join in partnership with the state and other industries to create uh, a funding and a project that will reach a threshold where then the larger community and green renewable energy industries can come in and, and develop that partnership for long-term sustainability. There's information that the public desperately needs, even legislators desperately need, and they need it from an independent authority. For the longest time, it's been our office, the independent authority, if we can bring another independent science agency, which UC Irvine represents, to the table to represent that. That's a huge step forward, somebody else that they can trust. In our work at the Salton Sea, the University of California at Irvine has chosen to do what it does best. We've chosen to bring our research and teaching resources to bear on the various 
sustainability challenges facing the sea. I would say that the major thing that UC Irvine has to contribute is the diversity of expertise that exists on our faculty and staff. We have biologists, we have uh, engineers, we have social scientists, people that are interested in water problems in California, and it really takes all of those different points of view and expertise to examine a very complex problem like this. What I'm hopeful about getting UC Irvine involved is that we can bring a fresh set of eyes to this ancient problem. And with this fresh set of eyes, with a more expansive look, perhaps can identify something that we've overlooked. What we're trying to do with the Salt and Sea Initiative is to try to get people to realize that the sea isn't dangerous, it's a great place to come, and that it can have the exact same popularity that it did before. This research project is brilliant because so many fabulous people are working together and, and committing to this. Almost every part of this school can learn something from this research project. So I see it as a, a bright future of not only education, the outreach on education, but the outreach to the public and the legislatures and bringing world-class science to the table. The problems at the Salton Sea affect us all, and together we can make a difference. We can preserve our breathtaking parks and wildlife, prevent our air from becoming unbreathable, and create jobs for a region that desperately needs them. I want to make sure that there's something there for my children when they get older, that we haven't destroyed everything and left them with just or a junkyard of, of a desert. I strongly believe that the university has a responsibility to promote projects that enhance the sustainability of our environment, that empowers and educates individuals to make a difference in their community. The Salt and Sea Initiative is a perfect example of that commitment, and I strongly believe that together we can make a difference. So join us, and together we can create a culture of change change that brings us closer to solving this problem for current generations and the next.